Right. Hi, everyone. This is part one of our BIS 103 map. This is sort of a way of how I hope I can help you to put all the different pieces, the reactions and pathways we discuss during the quarter into context with each other. So we'll continue um, during the quarter to draw out maps of the pathways we discussed. And you can build on those and I'll make small videos for each of those maps as we build them, hoping that this will help you to sort of maintain a good overview of all the different aspects of metabolism that we'll talk about over the next lectures. So here comes part one. Mostly what we had talked about so far is sugar metabolism, right? And so glycolysis was one of our major pathways. And I have drawn it out here just as a really basic map. Right, coming from glucose through glucose 6-phosphate, phosphate, fructose 6-phosphate, fructose 1,6-bisphosphate, then our cleavage reaction to DHAP and G3P. And then because we are mostly focusing on this priming phase, I summarized our later part, the payoff phase, just uh, here to our product of glycolysis pyruvate in the reaction 6 to 10. And then we had talked about a number of reactions on other sugars, how they can be utilized through this pathway. And so this first part of the map, I want to focus on some of the reaction pathways that are really important that we had discussed so far. Right? Just in this most recent lecture, in lecture five, we had talked about glycogen and especially internal and external glycogen. Here I focus on the internal one. How do we bring it into glycolysis? Right? We had discussed that we use phosphorolysis to do this. So we're using phosphate to break down the glycosidic bond. We're releasing glucose 1-phosphate. We want to now get into glycolysis. The easiest way would be just free glucose, but right, there was a problem. We don't actually have an enzyme to do that. Right? So now we are stuck with glucose 1-phosphate. Our way around this was this phosphoglucomutase, an isomerase that now can isomerize glucose 1-phosphate into glucose 6-phosphate. Everything's dandy. We have our glycogen and glucose from glycogen internally brought into glycolysis. Right? But yet now we have another problem right? because we also discussed in lecture five that especially the liver's job is to break down glycogen to release free glucose in the bloodstream, right? But we just bypass this step. We bypass it to glucose 6-phosphate. And if you see, remember from our discussion on glycolysis, this is an irreversible reaction, right? The phosphorylation of glucose to glucose 6-phosphate, ATP driven by kinase is irreversible, so we cannot go back. So how do we get to our free glucose delivered by the liver. Let's see, there's actually a specific phosphatase right, that we can use that exists in the liver only. And so this can dephosphorylate glucose 6-phosphate going back to glucose, right? Now we have free glucose. That can now actually be released from the liver into the bloodstream and we're all good. The liver can do its job, okay? But so this is a very specific phosphatase that exists only in the liver that can do this reaction, bypassing this irreversible phosphorylation reaction from glucose to glucose 6-phosphate. For external glycogen and starch storage, right, we didn't use phosphoryl groups for cleavage. We used water, we used hydrolysis. And in this case, we didn't have the issue of a phosphorylated sugar. This hydrolysis generates free glucose directly that can go into our bloodstream and can be utilized for whatever purpose in your body. So some tricks here that we have discussed on how we can go about bringing in these large polysaccharides, our storage facilities for sugars into the glycolytic pathway. And then the lecture before, lecture four, we had discussed a number of other disaccharides and monosaccharides and how we can use those and bring them into the glycolytic pathway. So just to bring them into the map, and we had talked about lactose. That was a disaccharide of one molecule of glucose. That's easy. We can break this apart. The glucose can go into the cell. That's not much of a major challenge. The other monoware was a galactose. And if you remember, we had this sort of 
a bit unusual pathway where we're using a transferase and we're bringing in UDP glucose to now transfer over the glucose and galactose. We're coming to glucose on phosphate through this reaction here. This is where we bring in galactose into the glycolytic pathway. And then you use the same kind of mutase. It's an isozyme of it that exists also outside the liver. And that we can use to now bring glucose 1-phosphate back to glucose 6-phosphate. We are in glycolysis. Another disaccharide we had discussed was sucrose, right? Again, one molecule of glucose. Easy, we just bring it into the cell. The other one was fructose, our ketose. And if you remember, we had two pathways on how to bring this into glycolysis. One was to direct C6 phosphorylation to fructose 6-phosphate, happening in all cells. The alternate but major pathway was our fructose 1-phosphate pathway. So phosphorylation at a different position with a few additional reactions happening in the liver only, but this can bring fructose in here at the DHAP and G3P stage. Okay. Another fruit-derived sugar, mannose, similar to fructose 6-phosphate, we can bring it in through phosphorylation at C6 to fructose 6-phosphate. And then last but not least, I had cheated a little bit, I had said glycerol also goes in here. Right? We have a pathway on how we can in bring glycerol, but it's not a carbohydrate, yet it is entering the glycolytic pathway for energy metabolism and is entering in form of DHAP. So this is our map so far. I hope it will be helpful. You can maybe print it out or draw it for yourself. That might usually help to sort of reconstruct as you're watching these videos on how all these pathway pieces we're discussing are fitting together and we'll continue to build on it.